Jacob Jofi Playground, 59th Street, KNL, also known as El Park. I'm gonna give you guys a brief story on why it's so important to listen to your parents. 30 is not that old, but person that's 30 has way more experience than a person that is 15. He was into guns, but at that time, I couldn't get my hands on one, so the closest thing was a knife. I was about 15, 14 at this time. Right here, bop. I'm cooking him. Grab me. He mad now. Grab me. Start choking me. So I'm like, yo, my boy. So I start hitting him in the back. No freaky. Five, six times back of his shirt was bloody. So the moral of the story, at the age of 14, 15, you catch your first case. Do you understand how detrimental that is to the rest of your life? One key thing, like the mother's intuition situation, she told me, don't do this, and I did it. Caused me major pain, or getting shot, you name it, to prison time, all because my mother told me to do this, and I did that. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To all the Hadith disciples, YouTubers, and viewers, welcome back to a new video on Rip Ride HD. Lost my voice yesterday. It was a crazy battle, but then I'm also sick on the low. Jacob Jofi Playground. This is on 59th Street, um, KNL, also known as El Park. This park was infamous for athletes basketball players in particular we um we used to ball out here it, it, it was serious it was like the rucker and i'm not gonna hold you um the rucker was dope but um we mimicked after that but with less of the fanciness but you still get crossed over crazy through your legs but it wasn't too 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 crazy rucker style because they used to really ball like so dudes used to come from all over and pull up so I'm going to give you guys a brief story on why it's so important to listen to your parents. Because some of us is 15, 16, 17, um, 12, 11. We're in an age where we think, yo, we know it all, but we're young. And I started to realize that later that 30 is not that old, but a person that's 30 has way more experience than a person that is 15. So on this particular day, I was basically on punishment. My mother told me, you know, do not go outside. Um, especially in that morning time and I really wanted to like go outside so I rushed outside and as you can see here we have the handball court this handball court was never like really changed the handball court always been here the basketball courts was always here but this had got renovated that whole thing became like a calisthenic playground now but that was also basketball courts um, and they renovated the whole thing but this here they just they just they didn't really do too much, so this has always been like this. So I came out, it was me and my boy Stitch. Had a couple of other bros out here, right? <clears throat> and we was on this side of the handball court at that particular day. Now, as a young boy, I was always into butterfly knives, all kind of weaponry, you name it. That was my thing, you know? I really was, really was into guns, but at that time, I couldn't get my hands on one, so the closest thing was a knife uh, so i always walked around with knives so i was about 15 14 at this time and this is when i initially caught my first actual case arrested you know what i'm saying and we used to slap box a lot like you see the youngins now but no we used to really slap box it was imperative that you learned how to fight but back then you know everybody ain't ain't really know how to fight like that you know what i'm saying and I would say myself included, but I used to still like slap box. I wasn't the one-on-one -on -one head. No, I was, as soon as you talk, I, 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 I pop because <clears throat> even in that era, people would grab you. And I was, I'm 141 pounds now. So you could have just imagined when I was 14, I was like skin and bones. So in, in any time I fought, people used to just take advantage. But with slap boxing, I was kind of slippery. You know what I mean? I, no freak out. I, I knew how to. Do the one two. So everybody slap boxing. We having a we having a ball. So it's one big dude. He bigger than everybody except for really Stitch, cause Stitch was always tall. But this dude is tall and he's kind of stocky. You know what I'm saying? So me and him get the slap boxing. You know what I'm saying? But I'm too fast for him. He trying to catch me. I'm slipping, slipping all his all his slaps, and I'm hitting him up. We right here. Bop, bop, bop. I'm cooking him. He get a little tight. Mind you, it's early morning. My mother told me, don't go outside. 
You know what I'm saying? Do not go outside. And yet still behind her back, I snuck out and was like, yo, you know, forget all of that. So I'm outside when my mother told me not to go out. And I had these two knives on me. The blades was like this big and the handles was roughly a little bit smaller than them. Um, <clears throat> and one of them was like, like straight edge and the other one was jagged edge. And they used to go into this little case and the case had a belt loop on it. So it was a knife on each side with a strap over it. You know, almost like a shoulder holster where you could remove the button. Poof, you know what I'm saying? And pull your hand out. It was the same thing with the knives. You remove the buttons, plop, and you can just pull the knives out. So I had it on my belt buckles here. So it was basically two knives. All I had to do was hit the buttons and pull both of them out like that. So I had got that from um, my homegirl at the time, Stacy. And me, I was mad cool. I don't know her pops worked somewhere. She used to always get these little joints. She was nice with the razor blades in her mouth. We young. So, so <clears throat> I got my knives on me, but we slap boxing. You know what I mean? Nobody don't really know my shirt over my joint. We out here. So he grabbed me. He mad now. Grabbed me, start choking me. So I'm like, yo, my boy, get off me. So we roughly in this area. So, yo, bro, he's choking the life out of me, though. Like, like, I'm a grown man. You're a little boy, but we all the same age. But he was so much stronger than me. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get out of the choke. So I'm on him, and my man's in them. They, they here, but you know what I'm saying? I guess whatever, you know what I mean? And at that time, me and Stitch right now is like, this was, you know what I mean? We was all pretty much cool, but now it's a little different. If it was like now, it would have been no hesitation that Stitch would have, he would have took off. <laughs> That's no question. You know what I mean? I, all, all, I knew everybody, but we wasn't like, like how we is now. So as he choking me, I just, I start standing up on this joint. Like, yo, bro, yo. And, um... Same, it's the same thing. This never, <clears throat> as I was going, I was about to black out. I was like, Niz Nagid, this dude is about to put me to sleep. So as I'm blacking out, I don't grab two. I grab one because I think I got one hand on, on his, you know what I mean? On his hand. I popped it, boom. Boom. So I start hitting him in the back. No freaky. Maybe like five, six times, maybe seven. I don't know. So eventually he get up off me. And when he get up off me, I come too. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm woke now. So now we face off. So he's here and I'm here. So I'm like, yo, what's up now? You know what I mean? So I got that joint. But like I said, the handle's like this. The blade is a little. So it's, it's small. So. They the whole time Stitch and the rest of the bros who was here. I don't remember the rest that was here. They thought I was punching them. But then they seen the back of his shirt. I didn't see it. They seen it before me. So he like. He like. You know. And I, I let him go. Like yeah. I right. You know what I mean. I ain't going to transgress the bounds no more. You know what I'm saying. So as he walked past me I looked. His, the whole back of his shirt was bloody. And why I stabbed him up? He was obviously choking me, right? But why was he choking me? Because of his ego of me slapping him up. Why did I slap him up? Because I was out here slap boxing. Why was I out here slap boxing? Because I didn't listen to my mother who told me to stay my inside so the moral of the story is I caught my first case now I'm ineligible to own a gun a firearm and eligible to protect myself and my family legally for the rest of my life now because I got a felony if I wanted to be a cop you can't be a cop now if you wanted to be in some kind of law enforcement you can't be at the age of 14 15 you catch your first case 
Do you understand how detrimental that is to the rest of your life? How much it's going to prevent you from doing certain things? So, guys, always remember that one key thing, man. No matter how much you think you know, as a young boy, as a young person, even when you get old in age, it's like the mother's intuition, the father's intuition, they telling you. Most likely it's from experience or how they feeling at the time. You might not understand why they're telling you not to do it and don't do that. But wallahi, if I listened to my mother, we, we cut the Allah, with my shafa. Allah has the creed and what he does, he wills. I'm just seeing in a lot of situations, he told me, don't do this. And I did it. Major mistake caused me major pain. You know, talking about getting shot, um, to stabbings, to you name it, to prison time, all because my mother told me to do this, and I did that. Y'all already know what time it is. Stay tuned, y'all. Stay ripped, six pack, big back, big facts. Translation is a lump of flesh, a piece of meat. And when that lump of flesh 